We've got Dick Beardsley in the studio with us. Hi, Dick. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. Glad to have you back. Uh, always great to be back in Duluth. Um, looking forward to the marathon this year. What are what are some things that maybe off the top of your mind you think might happen? Well, I know it's too far off. We don't have all the runners in yet, but mm, maybe you can make a little prediction. We, we don't, but I'm I'm thinking that uh, if we get a, a nice day, mm-hmm. cool weather. Nice day as in what kind of temperature? You know, Ideally, like when I ran 209.36 back in 1981, it was 48 degrees at the start, 48 degrees approximately at the finish, little fog and mist, no wind. I mean, it was perfect. Okay. If we get a day like that, you're going to see the Grandma's Marathon go from 209.06, the record now that was set two years ago. Uh-huh. It's going to be dropping down into the 208s or maybe even faster. Wow. I mean, you know, over the last few years, we've had a great contingent of East African runners, and now they realize that, they can run fast on this course and they get a group of them together. And that's what it takes. It takes a few of them to get together and go out at a, at a quick pace. But I think once they get in that groove and start going, you're going to see some really fast times. I mean, 20906 is nothing to shake your head at, but you're right. going to definitely see some times down in that 208, maybe even 207 range if we get the right conditions and the right type of runner. I don't think that those hills are intimidating anymore. No, the hills out there on the grandma's course, actually, I think, are beneficial because the only really, if you want to call it a bad one, is Lemon Drop Hill at 22 miles. And, you know, at that point, a race stepping up on a curb seems, seems like a mountain. <laughs> and But the other hills in between, they're just kind of that nice rolling type of hill, which actually, you when you go up and down those little rollers, you're utilizing some different muscle muscles and tendons in your legs. So you're not always that same muscle group on a very flat course. So I actually think the rolling hills actually help. And I know, uh, being a former runner, you'd never know it by my sleek body, um, that you can sometimes lean into them a little bit and, and take them a little bit differently so that you can rest up, like you said. You Absolutely. You can. And, you know, I, I was always, back in my younger, faster days, I always felt like one of my, my best parts of my running was, was d- my downhill running. And so when you get to a, a place where you got some gradual downhill or even a steeper downhill, you can actually be running faster then your what you want to run race pace wise mm-hmm. and be recovering at the same time. Now you got to learn how to run down hills. Most people, when they think of a hill workout, they run up hard, jog down, run up hard, jog down. But if you learn to run up hard, kind of take a little breather at the top and then learn to run fast down, you will, you will run minutes faster in your next marathon. And during those downhill stretches, like, as I said earlier, you will, be running faster, but be recovering at the same time. It's a great thing when you learn how to do it. Uh, my coach in high school was Kerry Laux. He's one of the the runners that started Grandma's sure. Marathon. Sure. Um, he always said, "You run hard uphill. You run hard downhill. You'll you'll gain the time on everybody else, especially in the uphill. And then when you run downhill, everybody's going to be slapping because they think that yes. they, they can take it easy. Absolutely. Meanwhile, you're booking. Yep. Nope. That he, that's a sign of a good coach right there because my coach Bill Squire is one of the greatest distance coaches the United States has ever had. He coached me back in my younger, faster days. And I, I know when I ran Boston in 1982, he says, Dickie, when you get to the hills, you know, the, the infamous hills there at mm-hmm. 17 to 21, he says, I want you to run them up them as hard as you can and even harder on the backside, on the downside of them. And that's exactly what I did. Yep. And it paid off. Kerry Laux used to always say that to me too. Absolutely. So giving props to Kerry Laux. He's probably <laughs> listening bet. to this going, all right. <laughs> He, uh, I, I've got a little story about him. Uh, I ran the Minnesota mile right after I got out of high school Yeah, and he was in the Minnesota mile too. And it was when it was down on park point. Oh, sure. So you started at one point and then you ended up almost by the bridge. Yep. Well, I took off and normally I'm not that kind of runner, but I took off a little bit just to see where I could land in the bridge right. and nobody went with me. So I had a little bit of a lead and I was thinking, <laughs> Oh, by that, by the halfway, I'm doing good. Yeah. I may have a chance at top five or right, winning this thing. right so i started taking it a little harder a little harder and i'm always that guy that kicks at the end yeah so i'm saving a little bit and i see those guys coming behind me and i'm like i'm gonna show them <laughs> they're all older guys i'm a young guy i'm gonna show them how much power i got and i took off as hard as i could and they went by me like a train <laughs> <laughs> you you spent too much in the early 
three it quarters of the race, I had baby. Plenty left. It's just that they knew the course, sure. they knew when to go, and yep. I'm sure they were just toying with me, just oh, stand, yeah. just to go. Let's let them think he's going to win. You're this doing one. the work, gonna set yeah. the pace, and they're just waiting. So I wound up with a top ten, which isn't well, a bad good. thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing, but not at all. But it was very funny, and I bring that up to him. I see him on the finish line all the time, you and I bet. bring that up. That's I said, funny. "You dashed my hope." <laughs> <laughs> Stardom. Yep. Now let's talk about Charlie Mahler really quick. You're going to be in the car with Charlie. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think some of his strong points are? I mean, he's, Everything. first of all, he hands you the plate. Yeah. You know, he really does. Charlie is really good at what he does. And, you know, he, he says he's not real techie, but he's a lot more techie than I am. <laughs> so I know you and him kind of work together and, yes. and really he's kind of the lead guy in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. And then he sets it up for me and makes it really easy. It's like putting food on my plate and I just kind of, take it and, and run with it, and we work really well together. And Charlie comes in really knowledgeable. He's researched the runners, and, you know, he's a runner himself. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of his strong points, I think. Absolutely. Knowing where to go with you and, yeah. and bring that so that people are listening and they're, they're riveted by the information you're giving. Absolutely. And he does have a lot of really important information, where uh, me, on the other hand, I always keep track of the each-mile split. And then when he throws it to me, I talk about that last mile and what they ran and kind of project what they're doing. And then what, what I can do is, since years ago I used to be able to run with that lead group, yep. I can hopefully relay to the uh, listeners what they're mentally and physically going through, especially those last few miles when the body is starting to play tricks on you and yet those elite athletes are able to kind of you know mask that and continue on at a very fast pace. So. I can kind of give the listeners a little bit of what that's like and what may be mm-hmm. going through their head. So, no, Charlie's he has been absolutely a delight to work with. I, I like the fact that uh, he it's almost like he paints the background on the painting so that you yeah. can paint with the details in. I, absolutely, he does. And because if, if the field was reversed, we'd be in big trouble. Yeah. If, I, if I was the one that was setting it up, oh, jeepers, that would not be good. It works great this way. We have uh, all great people in our broadcast when, when we go and do Grandma's Marathon every year. So I don't want to make it sound like I'm just saying, oh, Charlie's the best. and he's. We have great people uh, in every car. Absolutely. It, it, it's really fun to listen to because sometimes, like, we'll be listening, you know, when we're not on the air, we can listen to, the like, Carrie Tollefson or – folks covering the half marathon and everybody in the finish line announcers, everybody really does a knockout job. I don't, I haven't been around another marathon that does it as well. And that's hats off to you folks and the grandma's marathon folks for the folks that get to come in there and help with the broadcast. If I can give some props to Kate, who's sitting behind me, not because she's sitting behind me, uh, we get fed good information. And so we are always prepared as well. And that way I know where to go and who gets what, and Absolutely. giving you guys the information. Yep. No, so, that makes a big difference. It's yeah. a it's a total team effort. Exactly. Well, Dick, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the broadcast. Me too. Thank you, Chris.